we already built a chair configurator. But imagine you have like four of them, they will feel lonely. So let's make a table configurator. Hi, in this video tutorial we will cover three simple topics using React 3 Fiber. How to load a 3D model, how to modify it using a user interface, and how to scale and move items smoothly. Are you ready? Let's go! Let's start by looking at the 3D model I prepared for you. It's a simple table with three different legs layout. I separated the left and right legs for each layout to be able to animate them easily when we will increase the table width. I created a metallic material for the legs and added a realistic PBR texture on the plate. I exported it into a GLTF file we will use. I prepared you a starting pack project on GitHub. You can find the link in the description. It contains the 3D model, React Refiber libraries installed, and a user interface for configurating our table later. Run yarn and yarn dev and you should see this default cube. You can rotate around thanks to orbit controls. Now let's create a better staging environment. I rarely start from scratch. I recommend you to go through React Refiber examples to find a good starting point. I chose one named Stage Presets GLTF J6. It contains nice lighting and shadow settings. We start by copying the canvas with the camera settings and enabling shadows. Then we copy the stage component and orbit controls and instead of using their model, we use the cube for now. We need to define the color property, let's use the one from the gradient in the CSS file. It helps to build good looking shadows on the floor. Now if we reload, we can't move up or down the camera because of the orbit control settings. Let's define the mean polar angle to zero. Now our camera can't go below and is blocked on the top. We can't see shadows yet, even if the canva and stage have shadows enabled. We need to tell our mesh to cast shadows. Now we can see the very smooth shadow generated by the stage component. Let's render our table instead of the default cube. To do so, we use the gltfjs6 client with npx gltfjs6 and the path to our model. It generates a table.js file containing a React component with the extracted mesh from the table model file. Let's copy everything, delete the file and create a new one in the component folder named table.js6. By default, it's named model, rename it to table. We need to fix the path, adding dot slash models for both use GLTF and the preload call. Now let's replace the cube with the table. There's no shadows yet, so let's add the cast shadow props on every meshes. By default, the camera is a bit too close. Let's increase the adjust camera prop to two on the stage. It's way better. To be able to display only one layout at a time, let's create a folder named context and a file name configurator.jsx. Configurator context equal create context, configurator provider, and use configurator that we will use our configurator context. Okay, now we want to have the choice between our legs layout. So we define legs and set legs with use state. Our layouts will be 0, 1 and 2, so let's default it to 0. Go back to our table and get the legs from use configurator. And we will simply do conditional rendering for our legs. If it's 0, we render the first one. If it's 1, we render the second layout. And if it's 2, we render the last one. In a real project, you could refactor it more nicely. Now we jump into main.jsx and wrap the app in our configurator provider so it's available everywhere. Now we only see the first legs layout. Let's add the interface component I prepared for you next to the canvas. You can see the different options available. I commented the full settings so we don't mess up with the naming. Let's grab legs and set legs from our configurator. Let's uncomment the value and unchange on our layout radio buttons. Now when we switch, the legs change correctly. But the shadows are not re-rendered because the scene doesn't know something changed. 
A simple way to tell it is to get the legs value in the experience component to force the re-rendering. Now the shadows are regenerated when we switch. Excellent! Before continuing, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button to make this tutorial more visible to other developers. It really helps the channel grow, so thank you a lot. Let's change the legs colors. Go to the configurator and create legs color and set legs color with the same default value we have in the interface. Feel free to change it. Add it to the exposed values from the context. And let's apply them on the table. We add a use effect with legs color, so every time it changes, this function will get called. And let's define on materials.metal.color a new three color with the legs color value. We need to import everything as three from three. On the interface, let's add the legs color and set legs color and uncomment the value and unchange. Now the color changes every time we apply it. Last step, let's add the table width. In our configurator, create a table width date with a default value of 100 cm. Get it into the table component and let's calculate a scaling percentage by dividing the table width per 100. On the plate, change the scale with the table width scale on the x axis and keep the y and z to 1. In the interface, let's uncomment the slider value and unchange. Now our table width change, but we need to move the legs accordingly. We can do it simply by multiplying the X position by the table width scale. Now it works correctly, but still the movement is not very smooth. Let's fix this. Let's store references of our plate, our left legs and right legs. Because our left legs and right legs are never rendered at the same time, we can save the three layouts in the same references. Let's remove the table with scale multiplier as we will do it another way. We use the useFrame hook, which will be called at each frame. It provides the state and the delta time, which help us to be consistent whatever frame rate we have. We declare the target scale, new vector 3, with table width scale 1 and 1. And on the plate scale, we use the lerp function to transition smoothly from our current scale into our target scale. Now it works, but it's too slow. Let's define an anim speed constant of 12 and multiply the delta by this. Perfect! Let's do the same process for both legs, and we lerp our position. The legs Y and Z should remain to zero. It works well, let's replicate for the right. Yes, now our table configurator works perfectly. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned from it. Tell me in the comments what you would like to achieve and I will build tutorials around it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to not miss the great upcoming tutorials. See you soon, bye bye.